Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anne Novella. For people who are new here, they probably don't know that I am Belgian. And of course, who, Bel who says Belgium also thinks of Congo. A very, very dark past. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about a book that is written here uh, by uh, David van Rijbroek. That's him, David van Rijbroek, or no matter how you want to call him. He wrote to me the most important book ever in Belgium. It is uh, Congo, the epic history of a people. He came to that idea because he met two missionaries and he wrote uh, two monologues uh, about their account, about their time in Congo, uh, what they've been through, how they met the people, how they perceived the people. Beautiful, beautiful stories, heart-wrenching, horrible, funny, and when he realized that the um, audience wanted more of those stories, he went back to Africa and he met thousands of people there and he talked to them, talked about their history and he wrote everything down, he checked their accounts and he wrote their history. And, but it's not the history that you find in official documents. It's their account. The way they perceived us, the way they perceived uh, history. So he starts with the slave trade, with uh, Livingston, with uh, the first encounters with uh, white people. You have to know that for Congolese people in that time, white stood for death. The things that were white were dead, like ivory, like bones. And suddenly white people appeared. So for them, it was like we were risen from the dead. And it's like we would encounter uh, ex extraterrestrials, you know. It, uh, it must have been hallucinating and horrifying. And then he talks, of course, about Leopold II, who bought Congo. Bought Congo. You heard that right. And then, of course, the borders weren't exact, so uh, Leopold II invited uh, Livingstone over for some gin and tonics. And together with the map and a red uh, pen, they drew a line, and that was the border. And you have to know what effect that must have on the people who live on the other border. And it's, it's all very random at the beginning, and um, one of the first missions of Leopold II was to end the slave trade, the Arab slave trade that went via uh, Zanzibar just to replace it with something even more horrible. Millions of Congolese were dead, were killed, or were dismembered. Uh, they lost arms, uh, feet, uh, hands, everything. You can't imagine it or it happened. And then, of course, he gave Congo to the, he donated Congo to the Belgian state in uh, 1908, I believe. And then things got a little bit better for the people of, Af of uh, Congo. Then, of course, he also talks about how Congolese people were used in the First World War. Um, but they were actually respected afterwards, how brave they were by their fellow soldiers. And he also talks about the, the 40s, early 50s, when things got better for 
the whole people in the sense that everybody got a little bit more money, their uh, nutrition was more diverse, um, there were streets, there were sewage, uh, there was sewage, there was, things were getting better. And then of course, um, a lot of countries, colonized countries fought for their freedom. And the same happened in uh, Congo. But there's a huge problem. So Congo went independent very rapidly, way too rapid, way too quickly. You have to know at that time, not even 20 people had a university degree. Not even 20. For all people. Because, of course, the Belgians thought, let's keep them stupid so we can dominate them. Not a bright idea. Um, he talks about Patrice Lumumba. He was a rising, a rising star. Everybody was scared of him. Uh, he talks about how Patrice Lumumba and Mobutu sat together on a motorbike riding to a press conference held by the mayor of, I believe it was Kinshasa, I'm not sure. And uh, how he didn't show up, the mayor, and that started the real revolution. He also talks about how uh, Patrice Lumumba was, of course, of course, the first president or prime minister. I, I'm not a historian, I'm sorry. Uh, president, I thought, yeah. Um, and everybody wanted him dead. The Americans, uh, of course the Belgians, because he... Yeah. And uh, he talks about how the Americans tried to kill him, kill him KGB style with a poisoned uh, um, toothpaste. Finally, he was shot to death. Who is responsible? We will never know. But we are equally responsible in a way. And then he talks about Mobutu, his race, his rise, and how he uh, took everything over, all the plantations, all the um, mines and everything. He um, gave the most important jobs to all of his friends. Of course, his friends weren't always capable to run a mine, for instance, or to run a plantation, so that collapsed. So, 60s, 70s, 80s, um, it was the downfall for the Africa, African or the Congolese common people. Um, they suffered hunger, they suffered, um, uh, they suffered a lot. Let's, let's keep it to that. And then he also talks about uh, what happened in Rwanda with the Hutsis and the Tutsis and the uh, Belgian involvement. Uh, he talks about how the Chinese slowly actually colonized Congo and how there's a big difference between the people and the, those huge industries that are now owned by uh, Chinese companies. But he also talks about people and the hope and how resilient they are, how resourceful they are. He, he talks about the music and how um, certain bands are um, related to beer brands. <laughs> it's very funny. It, it's, it's a very rich and vast history account of, of the people and of the country and it's beautiful and it's very very well written it is funny at times it is horrible at times it is yeah it is congo it is what it is it's it's congo and and um he writes with so much love and so much respect and so much dignity for the people and Oh, it, it is so wonderful and I find it a must read 
use it for uh, non-fiction in November, use it for borders when random borders are drawn with gin and tonics somewhere in Brussels because Leopold II never went to, um, he never, never went to uh, uh, Congo. He also talks about uh, the rumble in the jungle, the famous boxing match between uh, Muhammad Ali and George Foreman, for instance. He, there are so many things he talks about. There are so many accounts, so many memories he has written down. It is an absolute must read. Do it, read it. You're going to love it. You want to go there. You want to see it, feel it, taste it. Um, I've never been to Congo. I've always wanted to. I want to go to Ru Rwanda too. Um, I've been to uh, Tanzania and Zanzibar. I've been to uh, Zambia, uh, Morocco, South Africa, but never, um, never Congo. And I regret that. I really want to go. Maybe I will someday. I hope so. This is on my bucket list. And um, yeah, it, it, whenever I land in Africa, no matter where I am, uh, it feels like coming home in a way. It's so strange. And uh, you have the same feeling when you read this book. It's so beautiful and so wonderful and, and full of texture, full of, yeah, love. Congo, the epic history of a people by David Varebroek. Bye-bye.